So I've been working super hard on this project. I finally got it to the point where I got everything back over here. Got my valves installed, sort of piping it back to my house. Unfortunately, my gas meter's here. So instead of me just going right in front of it into the ground, I decided to come out across in front and then down into the ground right there, keeping it all level, straight, neat, unlike that gas meter whoever the idiot that did that I mean come on that thing's beautiful it's nice and crooked I should call him and complain and say hey things sagging and I think it's gonna leak plus it's an illegal coupling right there that's not even a real coupling that's like uh, when they you buy the pipe a protector so I have this one fitting right here to still put together I sweated the other side because I wanted to make sure that I could line up everything here and tie it back into the manifold and know where everything is so right now let me just get my foot on that and lift that up so i already reamed it out it's always good to ream these pipes out but not when it's straight up or else you got you got to make sure you flush everything good but i even do i like the outside if you look you don't want no burrs or nothing inside. If you do the outside, you get this nice little like rounded edge on the outside, like a little, it looks pretty nice. And also what I find is that that also makes it a lot easier when you want to put these together for it to slide together. So now I cleaned it, but I'm going to wipe it off again just because I've done a lot of stuff while after I cleaned it and I didn't goop it up or anything so I mean you want to make sure you clean it that there's nothing on your pipe I even like to wipe the outside of this I put a union here so in the winter time I could just take that off pull the back flow and I'm probably gonna then make a bypass pipe just to kind of go around and through or something because if I leave this just sticking up it may be okay I'll decide if maybe I just want to make something to I'll figure it out at that point but I mean, I'm not a sprinkler guy. I'm an HVAC guy, and I love to do soldering and stuff like that. So, I cleaned the outside. Now, my brush fell in the dirt, so I'm just making sure it's clean. Now, you're going to brush out the inside. You want to make sure there's nothing there that's going to prevent you from having a good seal. Now, this is what I find most people do wrong with the flux what that's gonna do is that makes solder run so if you put too much flux well I hate to say it you're gonna make your solder run so I'm just putting just a little bit around there's several different tricks for this but this is the way that I do it and so I flux that let me disconnect this because what I like to do is then take my fitting put it on and I like to spin it back and forth to make sure that it's spread out nice. And now I'm going to put it back together. My union over here because at this point going forward, it could be together. I already smeared and spread around. I have my solder unrolled, ready to go. I'm going to start applying heat I'm gonna start soldering it using aeroceline everybody likes different things I'm even gonna oversize my tip I'm gonna use a number 11 tip and I'm just gonna lower the heat on here so it's not too hot and I can make this really hot if I wanted to but I see no reason for that now when I solder I always like to give the pipe a little heat and then bring it up into my fitting. This speeds up heating the internals of the pipe. And I like to move my flame around. And get okay. So now I'm getting a run with my flux. So I'm going to wipe that. A lot of the excess flux, the start flux just started to run. So. Here we go. So, right 
Get it in the bobbling. All right. I mean, it should pull most of the way around. Oh, that's a sloppiness. Pure, pure, pure sloppiness. So now, Add a little heat. You don't have to do this, but I feel like it just helps the solder fill in any voids. I lowered my flame by accident. Perfect. That's done. I just like to see it become metallic again one more time. If I do that wet rag. because that also helps in case you get that funky look from the wet rag, how it disturbs the solder and doesn't keep it nice and smooth. But there you go. Let's I'm gonna drop my flashlight. And I believe I got it all. I'm just gonna have to wipe it. So now that it's cooled off. The wet rag. That's a very nice solder joint right there. I'm gonna bring you guys in closer. I'm just cooling it down. Look at that solder joint. It's sealed. No. Dropped you guys. Dropped you guys, but there's nothing. Like, let's see. As you see, that solder is all around this. You guys are seeing it better than I can over there, but. <clears throat> so it's sealed. That's how you make a nice solder joint on a vertical pipe on an upside down fitting without getting run. I mean, you could tell from my fittings this was a bad fitting, but my solder joints, I mean, they're not the prettiest, but they get her done. Something splattered there. So I mean, as you could see, this is full of water. So if anything here was leaking, I'd have water dripping, but I don't. So, I mean, this is still not full. I have to bleed my backflow before I pressurize it. I'm gonna have to wrench this down. I mean, that is a nice solder joint. So, remember, one of the things is control your heat. The other thing is don't put too much flux on here. If you put too much flux, it's just gonna splatter, spit, may hit you in the eye, may not, but it's not what you wanna do. Just a little bit of flux, just enough to get in there because the flux is what moves the solder around the fitting, what it pulls it in too much, and it's just gonna drip down. Well, I'm Bill. Till next time, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe. Peace.